Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Now, I know you guys have heard this expression for years. God don't like ugly. So y'all quit tripping. You know, dump the foul attitude. Get rid of the anger and the arguments and the backstabbing and the, oh my goodness, the list goes on. Anyway, this is what I believe we're supposed to hear today. We are going to read from Galatians real quick, and then we're going to have us a little chit-chat. Okay? So hang in there. Listen to this. This is Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 14 through 21. No, 14 through, I think we're going to cut this in half, through 18. Okay, here we go. Just four verses. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another or one by another. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. And I'm going to read that last statement again because this is the crux of the whole thing. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Now I'm going to tell you a little story. I knew somebody years ago. Nice guy. This was my running buddy. He was a taxi cab driver. Okay. He invited my friend and, I, and me to watch him in a play. Now his daily profession was that of a taxi driver. He was professional, had his taxi the whole nine yards. However, his passion was acting. And he had been in some movies. He actually showed me some clips. And some real stars were in those clips. And I said, whoa, all right. But this is what happened. Well, first, let me tell you about the play. And we'll get to the point or the problem. <laughs> I watched him in the play, and my friend Eleanor and I were saying, wow, this guy could really act. Now, he didn't have a major role, but he had a, a, a substantial one. And we're watching, and I'm looking at him wondering, what the heck is this man doing stuck behind the steering wheel of a taxi? It didn't make sense to me. I watched him act. Now, I majored in theater arts. I'm making a point, so stay with me. I majored in theater arts. Brother man could act. I mean he could act. His acting level, check it out, was that of equivalent to, let's put it like that, his acting was equivalent to Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman, Sean Connery, Oh, my goodness. What is some of the tough ones? Jackie Gleason. Um, I know I'm going all over the place. But this man could act. I mean, he stood so far out from the rest of the, of the cast. It really was, was crazy to see him in this basement of a church in a community theatrical group. And by day, driving a taxi. With all that talent, the man was powerful on stage. Well, as time went on and we got to know him better, we realized what the real problem was. Have you ever heard the expression, your attitude determines your altitude? Yeah. Well, this is for those of you who have an attitude problem. You can be gifted to the hills. You can be a millionaire in the making, baby. Oh my goodness, you can have everything going for you. But if your attitude stinks, it's like tying a brick to a helium balloon. That helium balloon is up there. You tie that brick, and boom! It's over. It's all the way back on the ground. It's not even going to hover. 
in the air is going to fall like a brick because the attitude is a deadly weight that brings beautiful things down. And no matter how rich and beautiful your gift may be, no matter how your abilities could really enhance your company, no matter how your capabilities can really take your family to another level. Sweetheart, when you get through playing with that attitude of yours, you're about one paycheck away from Skid Row. Now, I'll share this with you. Our friend drove that taxi until he died. But he never made the big time. And that sentence right here that says, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. If I were to add to make it even clearer in this day and age, I would say, you cannot do the things that ye would if you could. Do you hear me? Because your attitude has screwed with all of your aspirations and brought you down. Now, I watched this guy interact with other people. This gifted, phenomenal actor could not deal with stressful situations. Instead of being polite and tactful, he would say things like, you know, what the hell's the matter with you, you stupid? You know, didn't you understand what I said? I mean, he didn't even know how to address a, a difficult situation with grace or with poise. Everything that popped in his head flew out of his mouth. Open mouth, insert foot. He really had foot and mouth disease. He just didn't know how to control his tongue. He did not know how to have self-control over his temper. As good of an actor as he was, he couldn't even fake it so he could make it. And there are times, you guys, that we have to play that game and take down when someone else is wrong and handle it, finesse the situation so that we can get past the nonsense and get to the goal. But every time he hit a nonsense button or roadblock, he would get caught up in the nonsense, make the nonsense ugly until it exploded in his face. Ergo, he never made it to the top because his attitude kept him grounded. What is your attitude doing? What are you doing with your attitude? That's why the Bible says we have to love one another. When verse 14 says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. When you love somebody deeply, you love somebody richly, or you have a tenderness in your heart that leans toward love, you become very careful about how you handle even the obstinate ones because you don't want to do anybody damage even if in your mind they might deserve a little damage or a little booty whooping on their brain. But you will be careful about how you handle people because you want to exude love. You want to exemplify the love of God because you do have their well-being in mind. So when you don't care about a person, when you don't have respect, or if you have nothing but disregard, and everybody's dispensable in your book, then you will tell them where to go, how to get there, and how fast you help them. Because you don't care about how it makes them feel when you spew out your little 
your little venom. You just spew it out. You don't care. So, I say to you, if you know that your heart is not filled with love, that in and of itself will spoil your attitude and your handling of difficult situations and difficult people, which comes back in your face and undermines your own goals and aspirations. Be careful how you treat people because you, in mistreating others, could be jacking up and canceling your own possibilities. You could be writing them off and canceling them totally out of sight where they will never, ever happen in your lifetime, which means your dreams will never be fulfilled. Why? Because your attitude is too funkadelic. It's just too funkadelic. Too lousy, too rotten. You get too angry too quick. You got a short fuse. You got a quick tongue, a quick lip. Don't know when to shut your mouth. Walk away. Follow peace with all men without which no one shall see God. You've got to follow peace. Everything doesn't have to end up being an argument that you just have to win. Everybody doesn't have to be told by you. You're the only one that's going to pay the price. And it's a lethal price. This man never made it. How do you want your life to end? How do you want things to happen for you? Well, consider the attitude, baby. God bless you.